Hello, my beautiful air signs, and welcome to your fourth quarter 2022 intuitive energy forecast. My name is Lisa Lyle, and this is my channel here on YouTube. If you're new, welcome, and thank you so much for being here. At this time, I ask that you take a moment and hit that subscribe button. And at the end of your messages, drop a comment down below and let me know how your message felt. Thumbs up helps too. For those of you who have been traveling with me for a while, thank you so much for continuing to come back. Your love and support allows me to continue to grow and expand. Please do take a moment and just have a look to make sure that you're still subscribed to the channel because YouTube has been doing some wonky things and we are being unsubscribed from channels that we love to follow. So thank you so much for your continued support. I greatly appreciate you. I'm excited to be back um, at this time. It's October 2022 as I record to share with you in this way. 2022 has been an incredibly busy year. And like me, I'm sure most of you have noticed this year has flown by. Where the heck has time gone? And here we sit in the last quarter of the year, which is shaping up to be quite uh, energetically uh, challenging. Explosive is the word that's coming to mind right now. And that could just simply be because we're a couple days away from our Aries full moon. Um, so we've got a lot going on at this time and I'm just going to get right into it. First, I'm going to pull a card for all of the air signs and then I'm going to go sign by sign. And at the end of the video, I am going to read the message from the overriding, um, uh, energy for all of the air signs from the tree angel oracle. So we're going to pull a card right now for all of the air signs. That's not it. Um, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Third quarter of 2022. I hope you're being good to yourself. Depending, at, just know that these messages are, at, in fact, timeless and eternal. Mm -hmm. So whenever you come across this video, I trust that it will be the most perfectly divine time for you to receive um, what is in here for you to receive. So this card wants to come out here. Juniper. And it's a number 10, which comes to a 1. So I'm feeling like this quarter for you is a new beginning, if you will. It's like you've completed or you're wrapping up a phase and perhaps you're wrapping up that phase with this Aries full moon, which is um, taking place on the 9th of October, the 10th, I guess, in um, like Australia. But if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, the 9th of October at, what time? I think I have the time written down. 4.55 Eastern Standard Time, 4.55 p.m. EST. So it feels like this moon allows you an opportunity to wrap up a cycle and then to move into this new cycle where you are, it, it feels like you're really um, following the guidance of your heart. Air signs can tend to be quite in the head space and and um, much like Virgos, overthinking things quite a bit. And it feels like right now that you're being guided to um, open from your heart and allow yourself to move forward from this space. There does seem to be like a little bit of energy, almost like you're protecting your heart space. And I'm hearing the more that you allow your, yourself to be guided from the heart and the more that you open up through that heart space, you are in fact liberated. There's something about this card that's really leading me to the star card in uh, the traditional tarot. And the star card is all about healing. So it really does feel like this quarter, this last quarter of 2022, is setting up to be an incredibly healing um, time for you, or at least an opportunity to heal. If you are willing, If there's, there's a big if that's coming through here. If you are willing to allow yourself to operate from your heart space, if you're willing to allow your heart to guide. 
Your crystal energy for this quarter is smoky quartz. And so again, it, it is leading me to believe that there's some sort of um, negative attachments. And perhaps this is why it's had you um, protecting your heart space. These uh, negative energies that are perhaps drawing your energy, seeking your time and attention. Working with smoky quartz is really going to help you move through this period and and really working with it with the intention of clearing uh any of lower vibrations lower energies in your field that are not um uplifting and supportive to your forward momentum on your path at this time i don't know a lot about juniper um juniper berries or the plant so i do feel like perhaps there's a message in there for you so maybe you want to um, google medicinal uses for juniper and work with the essence of that um of that tree there, there's something in here with the juniper berries and perhaps it's about protection maybe the guidebook will give us more information on that at the end when we when we tune in and read the guidebook messages so, and you may just want to, on your own, look up juniper and see um, what the magical and medicinal uses of it are. Okay, so let's get in. We're going to start with Gemini at 630 and see what your quarter is shaping up to be. I'm going to move this off to the side here. I'll get that at the end. Okay, so... Gemini for my Gemini, the twinsies that flipped out pretty quick. Um, and I was, as I was saying for my Gemini's, I was, I was thinking about the fact that Gemini and Virgo are both ruled by Mercury and Mercury is now, um, finished its final retrograde of this, um, year of 2022. So you may find, um, Gemini that your communications are beginning to open up again. You may have found that in the last six weeks or so um, of the summer, you were feeling withdrawn and not really, uh, not really talkative. You may be getting back to a place where you're more talkative and more willing to open up. The card that you got is reflection and it says illusion, self-examination and distortion. And so with any luck, you worked with the um, Mercury retrograde period to do some inner reflecting. And perhaps if you haven't, then you're coming out this other side and there is some distorted energy in your field. The number on the card is 13. This is the number of the divine feminine. And it really feels like you're being called to get to the earth. You know, I was saying at the beginning, the air signs can tend to be quite in their heads a lot, like a Virgo. Um, and so being getting to earth, really getting grounded, um, and connected to Mother Earth really allows you to experience a new um, sense of clarity. And I do feel like this full moon is a big one for you too. Um, after this full moon, we then move into eclipse season. And so we have a partial solar eclipse on October the 25th with the new moon in Scorpio. And then on November 7th, we have a total lunar eclipse with that full moon in um, Taurus. So we're moving into a really um, highly active time of year. And so it's really going to be important for you, Gemini, that you focus on your physical well-being, focus on, you know, practicing and working with the feminine essence of who you are, really mothering and supporting yourself because you're moving into a time of great prosperity and abundance. And this is a number 37. So it comes to that one vibration again, which we had at the beginning with the juniper. Um, so this is a new beginning. The, a new beginning is right here for you. And it's really about you um, being in a place to receive. If you're living in a land of illusions and, and distorted um, perceptions and viewpoints, if you're not really seeing the bigger picture, um, it, what I'm feeling is that you're going to hold yourself back from opportunities that are presenting right in front of you. For you, Gemini, there's an opportunity for expansion through your sacral and solar plexus chakra. So 
more that those two cards three cards flip so we're going to take them more clarity for you and more um Clarity that comes from emotional healing. So as you spend time over the coming um, days, weeks, and months reflecting, there, there is going to be an expanded perspective that comes from your ability to um, see clearly and to see through the illusion, see through and beyond the distortions, Let's see what's coming here. Okay, we've got the seer card. See beyond the current situation. Winter, take care of your needs. And lady, enjoy growth and re rewards. So what I'm hearing and feeling is as you take care of your needs, as you see from a higher perspective and expanded view, then you are really going to reap the award rewards of this abundance that is coming that is coming in and that is actually here present for you at this time. There needs to be a clearing. And so if you're seeing this in October prior to the Aries uh, full moon, which is a couple days away, if you're seeing this, working with the energy of this full moon is really powerful for you. It actually clears the way and sets you up for um, the remainder of 2022. Again, if you're seeing it after that time, remember this is not date or time specific. So, um, you know, messages from spirit are timeless and eternal. Did you see the light switch? Um, so know that anytime you see it, it's when you are meant to see it. You keep getting a lot of uh, double cards. Oh, this is perfect. Um, we've got Hilarion, which is divine healing, and the Shekinah, which is the sacred self. And so you are being guided by your higher self, uh, you know, the purest part of yourself, um, the purest essence of yourself as eternally connected to source. Your higher self really wants to guide this process for you, wants to m clear away distortion, wants you to get honest. I, I, I'm hearing honesty is key in order for you to make this transition. Otherwise, it's going to be much like um, the hamster in the wheel spinning round and round and not really getting, um, gaining much ground. So honesty is key for you at this time, Gemini. And Master Hilarion is working with you. And the, Hilarion has the energy of um, Archangel Raphael, as well as the mother's essence, Mother Earth, healing. This is an opportunity. This is a big opportunity for you to really do some deep clearing. I'm hearing, you know, like deep cleansing, you know, when fall, spring, we do these deep cleans in our home. This is an opportunity for you at this time, Gemini, to do that deep cleansing so that you move forward, you know, radiant and sparkling and all the newness can come in because the energy around you is all fresh and clean. So on Shekinah, the message here is unleash your spirit, express your gifts and dance to the sacred rhythm of life. And the sacred rhythm of life beats within you. It's the heart that beats within you. So trust the purity of your heart as you move forward and open um, to your gifts. And Hilarion, divine healing, honor your sensitivity, retreat to recharge and heal. Your light can support others. So it is pretty clear that at this time when you're connecting with these messages, it's really important for you to take some time for yourself so that you can move beyond the distortions and illusions that currently are within your field. So Gemini, I trust that those messages resonated with and support you. And we are moving on to Libra. Don't forget, stick around or skip to the end to get your um, tree angel message. Okay, Libra, we are in your season right now. Your season kicks off the, the final quarter of every year. And so for you, this is like uh, the season of rebirth anyways. And it's like what, take a, t take a moment or two to reflect on where you have traveled, or the road you have traveled the last year and, and spend some time I always like um, the season of our rebirth to spend some time reflecting where we would like to see ourselves in the in the a new trip around the sun, um, and and have we did we achieve the things we wanted to achieve in our previous trip around the sun? 
And how can we better show up for ourselves going forward? So this feels like a time of, um, I want to, I'm hearing like the inner retreat for you right now, Libra. So take some time and know that the time you take to sort of retreat and, and move within that inner sanctuary, it's, um, it, it really blesses your experience. We've got the thinking of you card and it says, a loving thought, serendipity. It's a number 29, which comes to 11. So you are walking a path of mastery, Libra, and that's why the master knows that there are cycles that we move through every day um, and every year of our life. And so you are at the beginning of a new cycle. Pay attention to the signs that you are receiving. It feels like it's a very magical time. And know that if you're thinking about a loved one in spirit, they are, it's almost like they're going to instantly show you that they're right there with you. So if you have been um, perhaps feeling a little melancholy um, as the seasons change, sometimes that happens, right? We kind of hit a little bit, we kind of dip down and go a little low. Um, know that you are being encouraged to honor what you're feeling each and every day. And that's going to support your ability to rise up on the other side of the melancholy. It does feel, again, like a solar plexus activation for you at this time. And the next card you got is forever in my light, safe and sound. And it's a number 13. And Gemini had a 13 as well. So this is really about knowing that regardless of what's going on in the world, regardless of what's going on in your life, you in this eternal now moment are safe. You are guided and protected every step of the way. And this is a call for you to bring your awareness to each and every day, not worrying so much about what happened back there in the past or, you know, really not spending too much um, of your energy worried about or thinking about what is yet to come. Really bring your presence into the moment because this is where your power resides in each and every day. Um, and, and the more that you can do that, the more you're really going to harness your personal power. For you, I'm feeling there is a need to get outside and get grounded. Allow your feet to um, <laughs> allow your feet to kiss the earth um, because that's going to support this expansion. There feels like a great big expansion, and you know the shaman is what comes out. So you are the shaman in, in your own life. And perhaps some of you have been thinking about maybe going to see a shaman um, or perhaps taking a workshop with a shaman. If you have been, this is a sign to actually do it. Go ahead and do it because there's something there for you. It goes back to that serendipity card. You are here to be a master within the human experience. Because beyond the human experience, you are now and you will be um, a frequency. Like I, you are now and you will be. You always are. But what I'm saying is beyond the flesh, beyond the meat suit, you are a frequency. And so this meat suit for all of us has um, an expiry date. Uh, and I believe that that expiry date was written in the stars at the time of our birth. And so what we do in between is what matters. And we spend a lot of time doing stuff in between that doesn't really matter much. And, you know, I pray and I look forward to the day that humanity gets back to from day one, really embracing the essence of divinity, which each child of light is. And so that we can go forward, um, really creating this bountiful experience of being a human on the body of Mother Earth, which is really um, meant to be our Garden of Eden. And so it's time for us to reclaim that heavenly experience while in the flesh, one heart at a time, one heartbeat at a time, one breath at a time. And it says, trust in the higher forces. And I'm, and I'm hearing, like, trust your heart as the compass because your heart is, in fact, what intended to be the compass for you in this lifetime, for all of us. We weren't taught, taught that in school, though. Um, so the keepers of light that are working with you. Oh, as I'm saying the heart, we've got the heart awakening, Lady Nada, and we have um, 
dual cool dharma unfolding so you know as as much as it's written in the stars we do have a soul path in this lifetime i encourage you if you aren't familiar with your natal chart you know if you've never had your natal chart read um look into that because that is really i believe our soul print um, in this lifetime and if we were all taught to uh, read our natal charts and then to follow and act accordingly I, I really believe we would have be having a much different experience here on earth and and I do um, also believe that there will be a time when that is the experience for all children knowing who they are so the reason I say that is because we think of destiny and fate right Faded events, like, you know, we're fated to meet someone and so we show up at a certain place at a certain time and we cross paths with this person that we're fated to meet. We need to take action towards both, right? Like, whether it's our destiny or fate. Like, my destiny is to be of service to humanity, to inspire and uplift humanity through the sharing of my gifts, the, the sharing of my voice. Um the sharing of my, my writing, all of this kind of stuff. Well, knowing that I can't just sit around and not write. I can't, you know, not do videos. I can't put stuff out there going, well, it's my destiny. So it's just going to come and land in my lap. Not absolutely not. We actually have to take action to allow destiny to unfold in our life. And I feel like that's a big message for you at this time, Libra. I, I am really getting this cautionary message right now. It's like, it's almost like you need some downtime. I'm hearing like, allow yourself to decompress, unwind, cork the bottle of wine. I don't know why that just popped in. It did though. Put the cork in the bottle of wine and come home to your heart. And, and, and give yourself, it's like, give yourself a little retreat. A day, a two, or two, maybe three, just you, no technology, uh, and just allow yourself to reset, get in touch with the natural rhythms and cycles of life again, because it feels like you've been um, <clears throat> not blown off course, but a little um, scattered in your energy, if that makes sense. This is all about your heart and, and you're being guided. I'm guided to say to you in this moment, you are surrounded by the energy of unconditional love all the time. So feel it, feel it like a great big warm hug. Welcome it in to your experience. And having flowers around carnations or roses or whatever your favorite flower, that it, it's, it's going to help to uplift your energy a little bit. A heart awakening. Awaken to acceptance and divine love. Give and receive in balance. So, you know, as a Libra, you're, you're represented by the scales and you may be feeling a little unbalanced. And I always like to look at our physical bodies as the scale. So the spine is the center point. And if we, I can't extend my arm here, but if we extend <coughs> our arms, that's the, you know, if we're giving too much, it, you know, we're going to tip out on the right side. And if we're not uh, receiving enough, there could be an imbalance on the left side. So the right side of our body is the giving side. The left side is the receiving side. So pay attention to how your body feels and looks. Dharma unfolding. Remember that you are on a path. Take one step at a time to happiness. And, you know, happiness does, doesn't come overnight. It is important to remember, though, that happiness is a choice and it's an inside job and it's a choice that we make every single day. So if you're not happy um, with the current state of your life, it's up to you to do something different to make that shift. So Libra, happy birthday to you. Happy season of rebirth. And I trust that you're going to take some time to be really good to you because you deserve it. And now on to Aquarius at 2424. So as I'm seeing that number 66 six is what I see. And so Aquarius, this is a message to you too. How are you feeling in your physical body? Is your body feeling balanced? And um, it, are you feeling at ease in your body? Are you honoring your um, path of purpose in this lifetime? 
Is what you get up and do every day making you happy? Are you happy to get up and do what you do every day? These are the questions, Aquarius. <coughs> of course, I didn't bring a bottle of water beside me. These are the questions you're being guided to ask yourself and to reflect upon. Are you where you want to be? Are you doing on a daily basis what you want to be doing? And if you're not, why not? It's time to uh, make yourself a priority in your life. That's my favorite card in the deck. The Gaia card. And it's um, wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual understanding. It's a number five. And number five is all about change. So I, those questions were coming up for you, Aquarius, because within you is a deep well of wisdom. It, it's like, you know, it's innate. You know things. You don't know how you know things. You know things. I find Aquarians to be very similar to Virgo. Uh, and I, I've known and loved a lot of Aquarians in my lifetime. And one of my longest... Uh, standing friendships in this lifetime is with an Aquarius. And so with that being said, it's like, you're here for great purpose. We are now, we have now made the shift into the age of Aquarius, the proverbial age of Aquarius. And so it's like, what are you doing? You know, are you doing what you came here to do? Are you, are you doing on a daily basis? What makes your heart sing? What brings you joy? And if you're not, why, why? What's the point? And, you know, I'm so over hearing, uh, you know, oh, money, this, that, you know, because it's like, it's like the um, false God that so many worship and so many through the false worship of this idol, which is the money, many have been deceived and they have allowed, allowed themselves to participate in trickery and, um, and that's funny. Uh, the trader card comes out as I'm talking about trickery and money. Exchange energy to create abundance. So it's not always about, you know, rolling in the dough. Yeah, that, you know, I, I guess it's nice. And it allows for, you know, the excesses of life. How about though, like rolling in the the heart space, playing in the heart space and serving from this space and being you know, um, uh, being willing to barter, right? We, we've been taught that we need to, you know, collect dollar signs. I mean, the paper money, the fiat money system is, it's false and it's burning. It's, gonna, it's going to crash and burn <laughs> because, you know, um, a society built with paper houses is not going to last. The wind is going to blow it away. The fire is going to destroy it because it's one of these, um, uh, bail systems that are not um, sustainable because they're not built in truth and integrity. Yet if you operate from the heart space, if you trust this heart space, if you serve from this space, that's going to create a, um, a vacuum, if you will, that uh, draws the abundance and the support and what it is that you need to move forward in life to you. Ah, oh, wow. Isis, magic, um, manifesting exactly what we're talking about. And, and that's why I guess I was guided to pick up on the 2424, that 6-6 six, six energy, because this is truly Aquarius about, are you doing what you came to do? Um, and if not, why? And, and if not today, when? Right? We always, we tend to like put things off, put things off. Oh, you know, tomorrow or next week. And then all of a sudden, it's a year later, it's five years later, and we're still in that same sort of hamster wheel doing the same thing over and over and over and wishing for something different. This is an opportunity. This quarter is a truly an uh, amazing opportunity for you, Aquarius, to do something different. And it's going to be up to you to take the action in your daily life to make little changes every single day in the direction of truly living from that heart space and, and manifesting from that heart space, manifesting the abundance that's going to um, really allow you to do more of what you love. And as you do more of what you love, more of the abundance streams in. And it, it's like this um, 
it's like this reciprocal energy, the giving and receiving, right? It comes in and then we share and then more comes in. We can't be, oh, I'm hearing miserly. We can't be miserly with our resources. This is what has gotten humanity to this collective point in time, um, planet wide, is that there's been a lot of hoarding by a select few and the, the many have not had even um, the basics uh, of life. And, and we're seeing that more in real time in 2022. And it's absolutely appalling and unnecessary. Um, so you also got the ascension into the light card, which is a number 30 as above, so below. Three is also... A, a number of creation uh, and I really do feel like you are here to create from the unified divine masculine and feminine within and so I always see the as above so below and the number three as triangles two triangles um, inter uh, you know drawn on top of each other so one with one point up and one pointing down I always see the triangle or the Merkaba over our heart space and really us sitting in the center. And so that is what you're being asked to do at this time, Aquarius, is to spend some time in your heart space, perhaps in nature, so that you can really be the full on embodiment of that um, goddess energy, that manifesting energy that you came to be. And it feels like during this quarter, there's going to be some opening of gifts that are innate and deep within you that you didn't even realize that were there. We're all gifted, right? We're all medicine women and men. Um, and yet many don't spend any time uh, like unwrapping their gifts or diving into their gifts because they're too busy being human. And that's quite sad, in fact. And so you are being asked this quarter to really spend some time within your heart space allowing your gifts to open and then beginning to share in new ways. And as you share, you receive and, and being this trader within this energetic stream that is abundant and, and uh, filled with more than enough for all of us. It's only man's greed that has um, um, that it's only man's greed that has cut off people, you and I, from the our what we need, which is human interaction, which is clean food, clean water, shelter, right? This kind of stuff, community. Um, and we're getting back to that. So it says here, your dreams, visions, and goals are becoming reality. Stay focused. And that, you know, it was clear right from the beginning of your message, Aquarius, that this was really about your path and purpose and what you're here to do. And what it's going to take is a willingness on your part to do something different, to change. Okay, so 3311, let's get to the tree angel message for all of my air sign friends and family. Let's see what Juniper has to say. Juniper wears a serious expression, yet one that is also seriously beautiful. Juniper has all the attentiveness and powers of observation of the spiritual warrior, combined with the patience and devotion required to stand alone on the moor and keep watch for all of us. The wind tugs at its leaves and feathers, um, and a feather whirls past. The juniper looks into the distance and sees everything. There are occasions when we need to act and others when we should bide our time. It is not that the juniper is passive, but rather that it has mastered the art of patience. It holds out and holds true. It doesn't feel weary, nor does it feel self-pity. Juniper knows destiny because it is at one with destiny. It deals with the inevitable out of devotion rather than duty. Juniper gives its whole being, its whole life to service. It, uh, its life itself is the gift without any hidden agendas or quest for personal gain. It gives because it loves, but without as so 
much as a whisper of this love on its lips. Juniper's willingness extends far beyond any personal desire, and it is always willing, even when it meets us with silence. If the angel of Juniper comes to you, duty becomes devotion. Fulfill your duty and you will be fulfilled. Saintly patience and incredible stamina will be yours, along with tenacity, perseverance, and uncompromising steadfastness. When Juniper's blessings are missing, we see pig-headedness and defiance. We charge blindly into walls because we lose sight of what we can and cannot change. We waste energy through empty defiance, and without devotion, we become arrogant and bored with life. So the message of the oracle is, stride for forward or hold firm. Give what life asks of you. Enter the balance between destiny and freedom. Release what doesn't serve you, yet stand in the gale and walk your truth. Duty gives way to devotion. Now that is beautiful. And it really, um, it beautifully mel melds and blends with all of the messages that came through for you, my beautiful air sign family. So thank you so much for being here. I trust these messages have touched your beautiful heart. If you would like to work more personally with me one-on-one, -on -one, check the link in the comments below to my website. I am now open and taking bookings for 2023 yearly messages. And it is always my honor and privilege to be of service to you. Give me a thumbs up. Drop a comment down below. Thank you so much for being here. I wish you an abundantly blessed fourth quarter of 2022. Until next time, take good care of yourself. I see you. I feel you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.